Hey guys, so I want to do a very brief check-in today uh, because I think it's important to keep you up to date with my progress, but at the same time I have a lot of information I want to cover today. Today is the day I go over what to expect when undergoing your first ketamine treatment and hopefully I'm able to alleviate some fears and bring some understanding uh, to the process. So, quick status update on my personal progress. I got a new camera, so you should notice a significant improvement in the quality of this video. As far as feelings go, I feel well. Um, I feel uh, mostly positive with a dash of negativity. Um, a little depression here and there. I definitely feel that it's been maybe a little too long since my last injection. Um, over two months now. Only a month to go to my next one, so... Um, have that to look forward to. Uh, but I feel good. I feel um, some weight from time to time, some heaviness from um, some uh, not dark thoughts, but uh, dim thoughts maybe. I am house sitting slash dog sitting right now and have been for the past week. So I haven't been sleeping too great, probably due to the unfamiliar environment, similar to staying in a hotel, only coupled with uh, a couple of dogs who I love and they are great. Um, but they need a fair amount of attention and have not grown accustomed to my sleep cycle. These are the dogs I'm taking care of. They are Airedale Terriers and they are Jetta and Ella. They are pretty tuckered out. We just played outside and they got two special rawhide bones. What's this, guys? Ready? Alright, let's go. Jetta gets this one. Yeah. Ella? Okay, let's get into it. I want to preface all of this with a disclaimer of sorts. In no way do I advocate the use of this drug recreationally or by yourself or even with a supposed guide. The only way one should undergo this treatment is in a clinical setting with a responsible doctor watching over the entire process. Before I get into the treatment itself, I want to talk about some of the fears I had that I believe would be common amongst most people. One of the fears I had early on was that it just simply wouldn't work, that somehow my brain is different. Um, more complex or less complex or whatever, that somehow I was different and that this would have no effect on me and that it would just be a huge waste of time and money and effort. But I can easily tell you and with much confidence that this will have an effect on you. The chances of it having a positive effect are massive uh, by comparison, but there is a chance that it goes negative. But again, uh, benefit outweighs the risk, the odds are very much in your favor of having a positive outcome. I was also afraid that I would experience nausea. Um, I think that's pretty common too. When thinking about the experience I was going to have, I just imagined uh, feeling disoriented and um, you know, a lack of control that I would feel um, vertigo, but this was just not the case when I actually underwent treatment. I did preemptively take a Zofran offered by the doctor. Um, Zofran is indicated for nausea and vomiting, but I don't believe I would have needed it anyway. The feeling that I thought would bring on the vertigo and nausea uh, never occurred. That feeling of being out of control. I was fairly sure I was going to be affected in this way because I am one of the few people that I have ever heard of who have had horrible experiences just while smoking marijuana. I don't smoke weed now, and it has been years since I have. And I never smoked weed on a regular basis. All in all, I smoked maybe half a dozen times. I think it was my second time smoking that I hallucinated and became severely nauseated. I remember a friend drove me back to his house, and I was begging him to go slower, um, and he tells me he's going like five miles an hour. <laughs> Eventually, I wound up gripping the ground as the world spun out of control beneath me, and I threw up for hours on end. It was pretty awful. And this event repeated itself somewhere down the road, and again, I was gripping the ground while the world was spinning out of control beneath me. This time, I was begging for an ambulance, which thankfully no one called. 
So you can probably understand how I was expecting the worst when preparing to be injected with a hallucinogenic. The next fear I want to talk about, and probably the biggest for everyone, is the potential of a bad trip. From what I've grown to understand through reading and my own experiences is there are a lot of contributing factors when it comes to uh, whether or not you're going to have a positive or negative experience while you are quote unquote tripping. First and foremost, I think a safe environment is key. Not just factually safe, as in you're in a place where you can't inadvertently wander into traffic, but a place where you feel safe, where you know inside that you are protected and comfortable. And in the unlikely event that something goes medically wrong, you have a medical professional there who can take quick action. It's also crucially important to have a guide. I don't really like to use the word guide because that can be taken many ways. It kind of sounds like you're going to do it with a friend who's done it before. So when I say guide, I'm talking about the psychiatrist, but he is a guide. He's there to direct you and answer questions along the way. He kind of keeps you grounded. It's, it's very important. Another thing is music. Um, it is surprising what an effect music has on the experience itself. I've heard and read about people liking a wide variety of music while undergoing the treatment. From my own personal experience, the advice I would give is to keep the music soft, at least for the first time while you're getting your bearings. Also, instrumentals or classical music are the way to go. Every little thing has such a huge effect during the experience that I think it's advisable not to have songs with words, or at least not English words or words you can understand. My first experience was with classical piano. Now I go with a playlist on Spotify called Classical for Sleep. That being said, I have a friend who undergoes treatment who prefers Irish folk music. Another important factor in ensuring a positive experience is dosing. The standard dosing range for treating depression seems to be about 0.8 to 1 milligram per kilogram. At the time, I weighed roughly 70 kilograms, and my first treatment was 50 milligrams. So to begin with, it was uh, pretty much an underdosing, and the doctor told me that he likes to ease people into this. It stands to reason that you would be much more likely to have a positive experience if you weren't given a max dose right off the bat. On to the experience itself. I'm only going to talk about injections as that is all I have experienced. I have heard things about undergoing this treatment with an IV. From the sound of it, it's very different. You're receiving the dose over a longer period of time, you don't go as deep into the trip, and I suppose that could be a positive or a negative thing depending on your take. So the first time I went, I was injected in two separate doses, spaced about 20 minutes apart. So you're actually receiving half of this minimal dose to begin with, just to see how you'll take it. Then after about 20 minutes, if you're doing well, you'll receive the second part of the dose. Once you receive the injection, it only takes about three to five minutes to start feeling it before it starts kicking in. Right after the injection, the doctor started setting me up, I believe, with ideas to ponder while under. I don't remember exactly, but it was something about the walls we build around ourselves in order to protect us from emotional harm. There were some other things too, but I just can't recall. My thought was after the fact that this was done in order to give direction or focus to the experience and I really believe it did. And back to the environment for a second. It is important for it to be a safe environment, but I also think it's important for it to be a comfortable environment. I hear of a lot of these things being done in hospital rooms on gurneys, and there is nothing comfortable about that. The room where I receive my injection feels like a living room or a den. It feels lived in. It has a couch and chairs and blankets and throw pillows. The doctor dims the lights, uh, sometimes candles are lit, Whatever it takes to feel at ease. No one has said this, and I haven't read it anywhere, but the assumption I have now is that a lot of doctors are afraid to let their patients enjoy the experience, which I think can lead to bad experiences. I think the reason they're afraid is because of all this government pressure, this war they've been waging on recreational drug use, and I think there may be a fear of someone drawing the comparison of recreational drug use to this treatment. Okay. Now I'm going to talk to you about the trip itself. One of the important things to remember, and I didn't know this in the beginning, this drug is not truly responsible for the trip itself. The experience that you will undergo is something your brain is capable of all by itself. Apparently your brain is capable of experiencing these things through meditation and breathing exercises, and as many of you probably already know, your body releases chemicals when nearing death that brings on these experiences as well. 
I've heard it said, and I tend to agree, that the experience itself is ineffable by definition. To paraphrase a great quote by Joe Rogan when asked to describe one of his experiences, he said, With these ape hands, I'm going to attempt to draw the face of God with broken crayons. And you're not even using the right canvas, you're like drawing in dirt. And that hits the nail on the head. But I'm going to do it anyway, hopefully in order to bring some understanding. Immediately after being injected, I felt tense with apprehension. Despite all the reading I had done, I just had no idea what to expect. And that can be scary. In those few minutes, I kept wondering, is this it? Is this it? Is this it? <laughs> but when it hits you, you know. There was this painting on the wall, sort of abstract in nature. I remember it as a peach against a blue sky. It turns out the painting was done by the doctor's wife, which I found kind of poetic. This painting would turn out to be of vast importance in this journey. A medium by which a story was told, a message was conveyed, a kind of portal or wormhole to this other place. The first thing I noticed was this peach took on the form of a face. Not a normal face, a faceless face with glowing eyes. As I was taken in further, suddenly there was a town below this face. Then I was taken somewhere above the world itself and then somewhere completely unrecognizable. Somewhere where colors and shapes held great meaning and were conveying a story of sorts. The reason words never do justice to this experience, and even this description is just such a dim view of what actually happened. Such an oversimplification of the journey itself. The best way I can really describe it is that entire concepts are being imbued directly into your brain. You see this thing before you, but it's not just a thing. It's a concept. It's an entire idea. It's, it's a thousand words. It's an emotion. It's, and it's just instantly part of your consciousness. One of the ways I try to describe it is it feels like your subconscious brain and your conscious brain are communicating while you sit there and watch. All I'm really hoping to accomplish here is to give you a glimmer of what it's like. Just a basic understanding so that you don't fear it as much. In short, the way I would describe this experience as a whole is that I was taken somewhere and I was shown something. And in that moment, my life was forever changed. At least with my first experience, it felt like days had passed, when in reality, the whole process lasts about 45 minutes. During the process, I feel as though I am completely unable to move or speak. And then about halfway through, the doctor does a blood pressure check, and it feels so intense, the thought of having to move like it'd be impossible, and then suddenly you find that you can. Another thing I find, and really with all of this, this is purely subjective, and everyone has unique experiences, but for me, I can't seem to close my eyes. I mean, I've tried, but it's far more intense when I do. It's like everything that I'm seeing with my eyes open gains more depth when I close my eyes. The same things are there, just more vibrant, I guess. At some point around the middle, I came back from wherever I was and found my voice for a moment. And I remember saying to the doctor, I think I went somewhere. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw him smile. And he then said something profound I can't remember. But I remember that his face was wreathed in light and his voice was like the booming voice of God. Later I realized that it was just the effects of a dim room and an iPad that he was holding that was illuminating his face. But I think it's an example of how small things can become huge in this state. I've had three injections now and they're all very different. This thing that I experienced from my first treatment never happened again, not really in that way. But one thing that is persistent throughout each treatment is this feeling of overwhelming gratitude. It's one of the first things that hits me really. I just feel so thankful for every little thing. This feeling that we're all one, that we're all connected, I know what that sounds like, and believe me, I'm not that guy. This feeling that everything we do greatly impacts the world and the people around us. The feeling is generally overwhelming, in a good way. All right, on to coming out of the experience. About 45 minutes later, once you find yourself back in the real world, it takes another 30 minutes or so to really be grounded again. That first time for me, towards the end, I kept popping in and out of reality. And then even when I thought I was all the way back, Things would happen to let me know that I wasn't quite there yet. Like this desk that I was wondering about. Why anyone would want to build a desk so large, and then suddenly it would grow a little bit smaller. <laughs> or I'd be looking at that painting and believed it to be back in its original state, and then suddenly it would shift a little more. 
This half hour or so when you're coming back is a great time to write things down that you want to remember. Or you can just hit the record button on your phone and start talking. It's definitely something I wish I had done the first time. It's something I remember, though, immediately after that first coming back. I felt like I had received months of therapy in that one session. I instantly knew that so much progress had been made. I had never felt like this. A fog had been lifted. I could see. The duration of the positive effects of this treatment vary dramatically from person to person. My first time lasted two weeks. So I noticed this huge change immediately, as did many others in my life, even those who had no idea what was going on. And it was right around the two-week mark where I noticed it beginning to diminish. And it was right around the three-week mark where I felt I really could have used another round. And then of course, at four weeks, I had my next injection. I'm just going to quickly go over my next two treatments just to give you an idea of how different they can be. So that if you experience something similar, you won't freak out or be disappointed like I was. So the second time I went, they increased the dose to 60 milligrams, which was a 10 milligram increase over my previous time. This experience was incredibly different from my first, whereas in the first treatment it felt like days had passed when only 45 minutes had in reality. This one felt like 10 minutes. In the first treatment, everything felt serene and peaceful and seemed to go on forever. The second time was very intense and short-lived and it felt like my brain was fighting me the whole way. I was in a different room this time and a different painting was on the wall and I did uh, see things and I did kind of go somewhere. My brain ripped me back from that point and said, nope, that's a window, that's the door, this is a couch, that's the doctor. So it was somewhat of a struggle. I definitely wouldn't say I enjoyed that experience. It wasn't bad, it just wasn't great like my first one. There were, there were many things, I think, that led to this less than preferable experience. This time I chose to lay on the couch instead of sit in a recliner. I think I felt maybe a little less in control because of this position. I think lying down is a more vulnerable state, and I think that may have had something to do with it. Also, the doctor chose the music this time, and it was a little more upbeat. And I remember during the experience I really wished I could say something in order to get the music turned down or off or changed, but I, I couldn't find my voice at that time. And I found myself really trying to focus on remembering things so that I could better communicate this uh, whole process to family members who I desperately want to undergo this treatment as well. So there were a lot of things that led to this somewhat negative experience. But after popping back out so quick and realizing that the whole session had passed while it felt like 10 minutes, I was disappointed. I thought, I thought, oh no, it was a one-time deal. Everything, everything I read had already told me that this was not the case, that the, positive, the long-term positive benefits are not derived from the trip itself. It's derived from physical actions performed in the brain. And while I was worried that this hadn't worked, or that it was going to be less effective, it turned out that it lasted at least twice as long. Because when I went for my next appointment a month later, I actually felt like I didn't even need the treatment at that point. And that was huge for me. I told the doctor this and that it was my goal to space out treatments further and further apart. And he suggested that we forego treatment that week and instead focus on setting up a plan for the future. That we turn it into a strategizing session for myself and uh, my family members. But I traveled to Santa Barbara for this treatment. It's a five hour journey, hotels are expensive, and I wasn't sure how soon I could be back. So I opted for the treatment anyway, and it turned out to be my best experience yet. This time we decided to go with the 60 milligrams again. So this time I've thought everything out and eliminated the things that were a problem the last time. This time I made sure I sat in the recliner. Also, I find that a blanket helps for some reason. Maybe it's some sense of security. And this time I chose my own music. Soft, classical pieces, like my first time. And despite my previous two experiences of not being able to move and not being able to speak, this time I still couldn't move or felt like I couldn't, but I talked almost throughout. It was a very lucid experience. In the place I was taken to this time, there were what I can only describe as thought holes. I could see them in the distance. Uh, there were many. And somehow I knew what each one represented, and I could guide myself to that hole, at which time I would fall into the hole 
which led to this line of thought that I was able to communicate. So I found myself talking, I guess, to myself, but also to the doctor the entire time. It was such a positive experience that at some point um, the doctor decided to up the dose and I went from 60 milligrams to 80 milligrams that time to tremendous effect. It wasn't a soft, serene experience, but it also wasn't intense and quick. This one actually felt like it lasted about 45 minutes. So it was almost like I was away and here at the same time. It really made me wish I had recorded the session. I just assumed that every time would be like the previous times where I couldn't talk. If you can't move or talk, why would you record it? That would be... It would be incredibly dull to record a session because I just lay there. But this was a new experience altogether. So I decided if it's going to be like this, I want to record it. And I'm going to attempt that on the next session a month from now. And this last treatment was the best yet, not just because of the experience in and of itself, but also its after effects have lasted by far the longest. It's been over two months, and while I've had some down moments here and there, as compared to the first time, when after two weeks I noticed myself sliding back pretty quickly, the way I feel right now is fantastic. I still have another month to go, so I guess we'll see. In the end, finding this, all of this, has been just so wonderful. I feel changed at my core. Everything is different, and I'm excited for the future. I would have never guessed. So yeah, I hope this sheds some light on the topic. I hope if there's anyone who's watching who is hesitant, can go forward with at least a little more confidence. There's hope right around the corner. Hang in there, guys, and I'll see you next week.